In this video, we're going to quickly review some of the major types of factoring, like greatest common factor or grouping or factoring trinomials. This video isn't intended to teach you how to factor these. It's just intended to review the factoring that you've hopefully already learned. If you find that when we're doing any of the examples, you can already do the problem, pause the video, see if you can finish the problem without watching the video, and then check your work. If you find that you're struggling with these, contact me. Okay, let's get started. The first type of factoring we'll talk about is the greatest common factor. So let's look at our first example. In all of the problems that we're about to do, the directions remain the same. The directions will always be factor completely. Okay, so first factoring problem. Let's factor the greatest common factor out of 32 x to the fifth y to the seventh minus 24 x to the fourth y to the eighth. Okay, when we're looking for greatest common factor with our coefficients, the 32 and the 24, we're looking for the greatest number, the largest number, that is common, so goes into both 32 and 24. It's a common factor for both 32 and 24. There are a lot of numbers that go into 32 and 24, like 2 and 4, but the biggest one is 8. So we'll factor out the 8, and we write the GCF, or the greatest common factor, in the front. When we're looking for the greatest common factor for the x's and the y's, we always take out the smallest exponent between the two. So x to the fifth and x to the fourth, we're going to take out x to the fourth. Because that's the biggest amount of x's that's common between the two terms. And the same with the y to the seventh y to the 7th and y to the 8th, 7 is the smaller of the two numbers, so that's the common factor that will come out. Now remember, factoring is really undoing multiplication. So when we're factoring, if we're undoing multiplication, we're going to divide our GCF, 8x to the 4, y to the 7, into each term. So to do that, we do 8 goes into 32 four times, Factoring out 4x's from 5x's leaves us with 1x. Taking out 7y's from all 7y's leaves us with no y's. Uh, 8 goes into 24 three times. Factoring 4x's out of 4x's doesn't leave us with any x's, but taking 7y's away from 8 y's <laughs> leaves us with 1y. So we have 4x times 3y. And I'm going to box it, but as I do so, I want to double check inside my parentheses here. Uh, I don't have any common factors between a 4x and a 3y, so I know I'm finished. Really easy to check these. You can just distribute the 8x to the 4y to the 7 back through the parentheses, and you should get what you started with. Okay, let's make this a little bit more math 12 level. So for the next one, let's do... 84a to the 75th, b to the 60, plus 44a to the 82, b to the 50, plus 400a to the 67, b to the 100. Okay, so if problem A was a refresher for the cobwebs to be cleared away, problem B is much, much better, much more pre-calculus level. So start with the coefficients. The biggest number that goes into 84, 44, and 400 is 4. Um, between, let's see, the A's, 75, 82, and 67, we can factor 67 a's out of all of them and for the b's between b to the 60 b to the 50 and b to the 100 we can factor 50 out of each one of those 
Okay, write some parentheses and write the leftovers. 4 goes into 84 21 times. Okay, remember, when you are dividing out the a to the 67 from the a to the 75, you're subtracting your exponents. So 75 minus 67 is 8. So I have a to the 8th. Again with the b's, subtracting 60 minus 50 leaves us with 10 b's and go on to the middle term. 4 goes into 44 11 times. 82 minus 67 is, let's see, 5, 15, a to the 15, ooh, b to the 50, Divided into b to the 50 cancels. And then finally, 4 goes into 400 100 times, plus 100. a to the 67 into a to the 67 cancel, so we don't have any a's. And b to the 50 into the b to the 100 leaves us with b to the 50. Now, before I box, I want to double check this trinomial in here. Um, there's a 21, 11, and 100. Definitely not common terms there, common factors there. Um, a to the 8th, A to the 15th. Ooh, but no A's in the last term. And B to the 10th and B to the 50 in the first and the last term. But there are no B's in the middle term. So we're good. We factored out all of our common factors. Okay, let's do one more that's also kind of a pre-calculus level. Let's do 7a times the quantity b squared plus 29 minus d times the quantity b squared plus 29. Okay, technically between the 7a and the b squared plus 29 in parentheses, and the d and the b squared plus 29 in parentheses, the only thing that's common here is the parentheses of the b squared plus 29. So what we're going to do is we're going to factor that b squared plus 29 out front, just like we did in all the previous problems. And we'll write that out front. It's our, it's our greatest common factor. When we do that, we divide this b squared plus 29 out of the 7a times b squared plus 29. The only thing left is the 7a. And likewise, when we divide the b squared plus 29 out of the negative d times b squared plus 29, the only thing left is the negative d. So we have 7a minus d. So we're finished here. That's all we can do. But I frequently get this question, so I just wanted to point this out. The question I frequently get in class is, you had two b squared plus 29s. You only wrote one here. Where did the other one go? Well, the other one got factored out. Both of the green b squared plus 29s got factored out front. And if you want to, quote, see where it went, you can check your work and distribute. If you distribute the b squared plus 29 back through, what you'll end up with is 7a times the b squared plus 29 minus the d times the b squared plus 29. Okay, that's such an important step for our next set of problems, but I'd like to do actually one more. So let's do D. Let's do 5x squared times x to the 7th plus 37 minus parentheses x to the 7th plus 37. Okay, so what is common once again is the parentheses, the x to the 7th plus 37. And that's the only thing that's common. 
So we're going to factor that x to the 7 plus 37 to the front. And I'll keep highlighting it just so we can follow it along. What's left over in the parentheses uh, at first, x to the 7th plus 37 factored into 5x squared times x to the 7th plus 37 just leaves us with a 5x squared. Now in the second term, we have minus just parentheses x to the 7 plus 37. So people frequently start to write the minus down, and then they think probably there's nothing left over. I've taken the x to the 7 plus 37, so then they just don't write anything. But truly, there's a coefficient of a 1 there. So really what I have left over is a 5x squared minus 1. So our answer is parentheses x to the 7 plus 37, close parentheses, and then times parentheses 5x squared minus 1. Okay, let's go on to the next page and do factoring by grouping. All right, so in the second method, when we factor by grouping, we're going to always have an even number of terms. So let's see, we're going to factor by grouping. Let's do the first one. Let's do 3x cubed minus 12x squared plus 5x minus 20. So notice here we have one, two, three, four terms. Whenever you factor by grouping, you always have to have four, six, eight, ten, etc. number of terms if you're going to factor by grouping. We always need an even number to factor by grouping because we're going to pair these up. So let's do that. So I'll pair up the first, the first pair and the second pair. And in the first pair, let's look for a mini GCF, greatest common factor that goes into a 3x cubed and a 12x squared. Well, the number for the numbers, the biggest number that goes into both 3 and 12 is really just a 3. So we'll factor that out. And between an x cubed and an x squared, we can take out an x squared. When we do that, we factor that out of just the first two terms. 3x squared into 3x cubed just leaves us with x. And a minus 12x squared divided by 3x squared is minus 4. Okay, bring down the middle sign. So in this case, it's a plus connecting the first pair to the second pair. So I'll bring that down. And then do the same thing with the 5x and the 20. So between the 5x and the 20, the only common factor is a 5. And when again, when we factor that out, we're left with an x minus 4. Now hopefully this looks really familiar to what we did in the last problem. We have an x minus 4 and an x minus 4 in both of our terms. So we're going to treat that x minus 4 just like we did before as a common factor and we're going to factor out the x minus 4 and see what we have left over. So when we take out that x minus 4, what we have left over in the first term is 3x squared and what we have left over in the second term is plus 5. So our answer is x to the 4, x minus 4, sorry, times 3x squared plus 5. Okay, let's do one more of these before we move on. Let's do factor 8x cubed plus 10x squared minus 28x minus 35. Okay, just to double check, we have one, two, three, four terms. So yep, we should look and see if we can do grouping. And sure enough, when we break these up into pairs, this is great. The common factor between an 8x to the 3 and a 10x to the 2 
is a 2x. And what's left over is 4x squared plus 5. Okay. Very important step right here. Bring down the negative sign or the subtraction sign that connects the first pair to the second pair. Because here, when we look for our common factor between a negative 28x and a negative 35, 7 goes into both of them. That red negative that I wrote in front, that we brought down in front of the 7, that tells us we're actually going to factor out a negative, not just, a negative 7, not just a 7. So negative 7 into negative 28x is 4x. And negative 7 into negative 35 is positive 5. And I see that I made a mistake. This is so great. If I were clever, I would play that off. Like, oh, I did that on purpose to see if you're paying attention. But I can tell right away that I made a mistake, right? Because 4x plus 5 does not match 4x squared plus 5. They're not the same. And I can see where my mistake is now. They have to match. They have to be the same because I need to factor them out like I did in the previous problem, like a greatest common factor. So let's look back. The second set of factoring I did looks fine. I think I made a mistake in the first set of factoring. The common factor with the x's between an x to the 3 and an x to the 2 isn't an x. It's an x to the 2. So when I factor out an x to the 2 from an x to the 3, I have a 4x left over, not a 4x squared. And when I factor out a 2x squared from a 10x squared, I do have a plus 5. Huh. Better. OK, now I can tell I caught that mistake because this didn't work. They didn't match. Now that I caught that mistake, they do match. So what I can do is factor out the matching 4x plus 5s, write it in front, and I'll keep highlighting it. And then what's left over is the 2x squared and then the minus 7. Great. Okay. On to the next type of factoring. Okay, there are many ways to factor trinomials. So if you were taught a different way previous to this class, that's perfectly okay. As long as you consistently are getting the same answers that I'm getting, that'll be fine. So I'm gonna pick a way that requires less guessing or actually no guessing at all. So this is not necessarily better or worse than the other methods. It just is easier for me to teach in an online format. So we're going to factor all of these completely, as always. And the first one we'll do, let's factor 2x squared plus x minus 15. Okay. Again, there's a lot of different ways to factor it. Here's the way I'm going to show you how to do. It's called the AC method. So that refers to AX squared BX plus C. So the AC method starts by multiplying A times C. Frequently, we like to collect this in a diagonal box like this, and then we are going to put B in the bottom. So ours is going to look like a times c is 2 times negative 15 or negative 30. And the b here in the middle is a coefficient of 1. Now what we're looking for in the two other portions is numbers that multiply to make whatever a times c is and add or subtract to make whatever b is. OK, so look at our numbers here. We have negative 30. So we're looking for two numbers to multiply to be negative 30. 
and that add or subtract to be negative one. I'm sorry, to be positive one. Okay, so the numbers that could multiply to be 30, I'm gonna make a systematic list. I've got one and 30, two and 15, three and 10, four doesn't go into 30, but five does, it goes in six times. Ooh, of this entire list right here, this is done, because then the next one I'm gonna get is a six and five, so this is a complete list. Of these numbers I listed here, only one pair will ever add or subtract to give us a positive one, and that is the six and the five. As long as the five is negative and the six is positive. So I'm gonna write in our little diagonal box up there, um, a negative five and a positive six. Those two numbers, multiply to give me negative 30 and add to give me positive one. And here is how we're gonna use them. Po negative five and positive six, we're gonna bring them over here back to our original problem and we're gonna use them to unsimplify the middle term. So I'm gonna leave the two x squared alone and the minus 15 at the end alone and I'm gonna break up the positive one x to be a negative 5x plus 6x. And pause for just one second. I just want to verify. Yep, negative 5x plus 6x does simplify back down to a 1x. And here's how that's helpful. Now, one quick comment. It doesn't matter whether I put the negative 5x first and the plus six X second or the other way around, it'll work both ways. So don't worry about that. I just happened to put the negative five first cause I put it uh, on the left side over here. So when we do this, now we have, we took three terms and we just changed it to four terms. So now we can use grouping that we were just practicing in the last section. So group together the first pair and then the second pair out of the first pair, 2x squared and negative 5x, all we can take out is just an x. And that leaves us with 2x minus 5. Just like in the last set of problems, bring down the symbol that connects the first pair to the second pair. So here that's a plus sign. And between a 6x and a 15, the only thing we can take out of there is a 3. And when we do, that'll leave us with a 2x minus 5. I will highlight one more time, just for fun. Uh, the two X minus five matches the other two X minus five. So that's a great sign that we did something right. So we're gonna factor out the two X minus fives to the front, highlight one last time. And that leaves us with an X plus three. Okay, so our answer is 2x minus 5 times x plus 3. Um, one quick thing to note. Multiplication is what we call commutative. So 2 times 7 is 14, just like 7 times 2 is 14. In other words, order doesn't matter. So if you happened to write the answer as x plus 3, first and then 2x minus 5 second, perfectly okay. What does matter is that the plus goes with the 3 and the minus with the 5 and all those things do matter. But whether you write this parentheses with 2x minus 5 first or second, that doesn't matter. Okay, let's do a couple more of these so we're sure we have this, this method down. All right, for our next example, let's factor 6x squared plus 5x minus 6. Okay, it has three terms, so I'm going to use this method here, and there's no common factor with all three terms. So to use the AC method, A times C would be 6 times negative 6, which is negative 36. And B is positive 5. Okay, so I'm not going to oops, I'm not going to write this list every single time, but you do want to write all of the numbers 
in a systematic way. So see how my number's going 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9, 5 doesn't go in, but then 6 and 6, I'm going to get repeats now. So I start with the numbers that multiply to be 36, and then look for any pair that could possibly give me, it's a negative 36, could possibly give me a positive 5. It looks like that could only be 4 and 9 if the 4 is negative and the 9 is positive. So once again, here's how we do that. Leave the first term as 6x squared and use your negative 4 and positive 9 to unsimplify your middle term. Minus 4x plus 9x does in fact make a 5x. And then leave the last term, the minus 6, the same. The whole point of that is we just went from three terms to four terms where we can use grouping. So when we group with the four terms, the first pair and the second pair, the number I can take out of a 6x squared and a negative 4x is a 2x that leaves me with a 3x minus 2. Bring down the plus sign that connects the first to the second pair. And the factor that goes into 9x and 6 is just a 3. But it's good, that leaves us with a 3x and then a minus 2. So since the 3x minus 2's match, we can factor that out, 3x minus 2, and we're left with a 2x plus 3. Terrific. Okay, let's do one more of these easier ones, and then I want to make this a little bit harder. Let's do this x squared um, minus 13x plus 36. Okay, I'm going to do this one two different ways, um, a long way and then a short way. When you have a leading coefficient that's a 1, there is a shortcut to these. Couldn't have used it here because my leading coefficient in the previous problem was a 6. But when your leading coefficient is a 1, that's a beautiful thing because there is a shortcut. But I want you to rest assured we can still do this problem the way we've been doing it. Um, 1 times 36 is 36, and negative 13 goes down below. Oh, I'm such a cheater. Look, I have all the factors listed of numbers that multiply to be 36. Oh, and it's positive 36 this time. And coincidentally, I didn't plan this, but coincidentally, it's still 9 and 4 that we would use. We just want them both to be negative, so minus 4 and minus 9. Okay, so x squared minus 4x minus 9x and then plus 36. And when we group, because we have four terms, in the first pair I can take out an x, leaving us with x minus 4. Bring down the negative sign. In the second pair, we can take out a 9. Ooh, but it's actually a negative 9 because we brought this negative sign down. So that's good because negative 9 goes into negative 9x, leaving us with x. And negative 9 goes into positive 36, negative 4 times. The x minus 4 and x minus 4 match, so we can factor it out like a greatest common factor. x minus 4 times x minus 9. Fabulous. Okay, here's what I want you to notice. The x minus 4 and the x minus 9, that minus 4 and minus 9 happens to be the same thing from our little magic x, let's call it. I don't know, whatever that red thing is up there. That's not a coincidence. So if your leading coefficient is a 1, you can stop here and skip 
all of this stuff just going straight to the answer. So in other words, if you had x squared minus 37x plus 36, really similar to the problem we just did, and you want to look for what are the two numbers that multiply to be 36 and add to be negative 37, well, the only way we can have numbers that multiply to be positive 36 and add to be negative 37 is if they're a negative 36 and a negative 1, if they're this one. So instead of doing grouping for that whole thing and doing all of these steps that we did here, we can just skip to x minus 36, x minus 1. because we have our one here and the 30, oops, sorry, <laughs> the 36 and the one over here. Cool. Okay. I expect college algebra students to be able to factor something like C and D very, very quickly. I understand that B might take a little longer. There's no shortcut. Uh, for B, there are other methods for doing these, but there's no shortcut for these. So as one final problem here, if we did x squared minus 10x plus 24, the only numbers that multiply to be 24 and add to be negative 10 are, well, seems like there's two, right? 6 and 4, and 2 and 12, mm, but not with the signs. If we had uh, to get a negative 10, a negative 12 and a positive 2, that's not going to give us a negative, a positive 24. That'll give us a negative 24, so this won't work. But a 6 and a 4, if they're both negative, will give us both a negative 10 when we add them, and a positive 24 when we multiply. So we're, in fact, done. x minus 6, x minus 4. All finished. Our very last set of problems, I want to use some difference of squares, the difference of squares. So for the first one, uh, let's see, this is the fourth type. And for the first one, I want to factor something silly. I want to factor x squared minus 36. Now, this difference of squares has a formula that hopefully you've seen before. a squared minus b squared. That's the difference, subtraction, of two perfect squares. And it always factors to a minus b times a plus b. And like we mentioned in the previous section, it doesn't matter whether the plus comes first or the minus comes first, just as long as they're both there. So to factor an x squared minus 36, we would just write x minus 6, x plus 6. Or to factor, say, uh, 4x squared minus an 81, Okay, we would do 2x minus 9 and 2x plus 9. Notice in each one of these, I'm always taking the square root of the numbers for the perfect squares. And if I were to do one last one, let's say we had 36 a squared minus 49b squared. Okay, so that would be a 6a plus 7b, and we need a minus 1, 6a minus 7b. And again, it doesn't matter which comes first, the plus or the minus. Okay, if you don't mind, I want to take just a second and show you why this formula works. And we'll do it with x squared minus 36. Okay, I'm going to unsimplify that. If you notice, x squared minus 36 is missing the x term in the middle that's typically there. So the only way a, a polynomial can be missing a term 
is if the coefficient of that term is zero. Then zero times x would be zero, and we wouldn't write the term in there. So I'm going to unsimplify it to write x squared plus zero x minus 36. And what I like about this is I have three terms, so I can use the method we were using before and look for two numbers that multiply to be 36 and negative 36 and add to be zero. Moreover, it's a one, so I can use the shortcut. And if you look at the list of numbers that multiplies to be 36, one and 36 and two and 18 and three and 12 and four and nine and five didn't go in, but six and six, the only way any of those will ever add to zero is if we have a six and a six. And we would have to have to get zero one positive and one negative, that would give us both a zero to adding up with adding them up and a negative 36 when multiplying. So we have a minus six and a plus six. Great. Actually showing you why served two purposes. It also can explain why the x squared plus 36 is prime. So I'm going to make this question D. This doesn't factor. It's prime. There's no way to factor a sum of two squares. And the reason it's prime, if you look back up at the previous example we were doing, let me get out a different colored pen here. If I change this to x squared plus 36, a plus 36, and I'm going to erase our work here, and here, and here, and I'm going to make this a plus 36. Okay, still can use this same list we have here, because it still multiplies to be 36s, but now I'm kind of stuck, because I cannot use a positive 6 and a negative 6, although they give me 0 just fine, they multiply to be negative 36, not positive 36. So that's a problem. Well, I certainly can't change to any of these other pairs of numbers to be, neg to be positive 36 because they're not going to give us zero. And I definitely can't just make this both sets of negatives, negative and negative or positive and positive, they might give me a positive 36 okay, but now they're no longer going to give me zero. And that's all my possibilities. So if you have the sum of two squares, your answer is always prime. In this last set of examples, I'd like to do four problems that are combinations of the ones that we just practiced. So I think we're at number five. Okay, so let's factor completely as always. 32x to the seventh minus 50x to the fifth. I'm sorry, there are five problems, not four problems. Okay, um, man, the first thing you always want to look for is, do you have a greatest common factor? We certainly do. These are even numbers, so it looks like the biggest I can pull out of a 32 and a 50 is a 2. And factoring x to the 7 and x to the 5, we can take out x to the 5th. So this leaves us 16x squared minus 25. Okay. Normally, we would have been done, previously would have been done, but now we know a lot more factoring. This is the difference of two squares. So we can continue to factor 2x to the fifth. Let's see, 4x minus 5, 4x plus 5. Terrific. Okay, let's do another one, number 6. Let's do 3x to the 79th minus... 3x to the 78th minus 36x to the 77th. 
Okay, definitely a greatest common factor here, right? I can factor a three out of all those terms. And I can also factor out a whopping 77 X's out. Okay, let's see what that leaves us with. Three goes into three once and taking 77 X's out of 79 leaves us with two X's left over, X to the two. Uh, three goes into negative three, leaving us with a negative one. And if we take 77 X's away from 78, we have one X. So X squared minus X, three goes into 36 12 times, so minus 12. Oh, and taking 77 X's away from 77 X's just leaves us with no X's. So three X to the 77 times X squared minus X minus 12, which is a trinomial. We're looking for numbers that multiply to be negative 12 and add to be negative one. Those would be negative four and positive three. And it's a shortcut problem because there's a one in front. So this leaves us three X to the 77 times X minus four times X plus three. Terrific. Okay, let's do another one. Number seven. Let's do 2x to the 8th, y to the 5th, minus 30x to the 7th, y to the 5th, plus 112x to the 6th, y to the 5th. Whew. Okay. All right, here we go. Um, ooh, common factors makes life easy. 2, 30, and 112, definitely we can take out a 2. Uh, the x's, the smallest exponent, is an x to the 6th. And they all have y to the 5. That's nice. So when we factor out the common factor of 2x to the 6th, y to the 5th, we're left with x squared minus 15x plus 56. Hey, that's not so bad. Okay, so now we're just looking for numbers that multiply to be 56 and add to be negative 15. That's negative 8 and negative 7. Again, it's a shortcut one, 1x one squared. So I've got 2x, oops, started writing in black. Let's write in purple. 2x to the 6th, y to the 5th, times x minus 8, times x minus 7. Okay. Let's do one more on here. I think we're going to run out of room. So let's do this one. Let's do 8x squared minus 2xy plus 3y squared. Okay, now this isn't technically a combination one. There's no common factor here with 8x squared, 2xy, and 3y squared. It appears there might be, but there's really nothing that goes into all three. So I'm going to go straight to... this. I want two numbers that multiply to be, let's see, oh, it's not even a shortcut one. Dang that eight. Okay, so eight times three is 24. Should add to be negative two. So numbers that multiply to 24 and add to negative two would be six and four as long as the six is negative and the four is positive. So let me show you how to deal with these when you have an X with a Y, because that can be sometimes confusing. We're going to start with the 8X squared. Remember, we use those blue negative 6 and positive 4 to break up the middle term. Since that middle term has X and Y together, then I'm going to write minus 6XY plus 4xy to stay consistent with the negative 2xy. And then the minus 3y squared. 
Okay, now remember the whole point of that was to use grouping. And we have four terms. So grouping our first pair together and then our second pair together gives us, let's see, 8x squared minus 6xy, we can take out a 2 and an x. And we'll be left with 4x minus 3y. All right, bringing down the positive sign. 4xy minus 3y squared, we can just take out a y leaving us with 4x minus 3y. So our answer becomes 4x minus 3y is factored out and 2x plus y remains in. Terrific. I want to do one more problem here and then we'll be finished. Okay, last one. 4x to the third minus 28x squared minus 9x plus 63. Okay, it's got four terms, no common factor, so we're gonna group. When we take out of the first two a 4x squared, it leaves us x minus seven. When we bring down the minus sign, and then from the second pair, 9x and 63, we can take out a 9, leaving us again with x minus 7. So pulling out the x minus 7, so we have x minus 7 times the leftovers 4x squared minus 9. And then finally, the 4x squared minus 9 factors more x minus 7 times 2x minus 3 2x plus 3. All finished.